Ladies and gentlemen, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and we have a new airplane from DW Hobby, as you can see. This the is Edge 540. Exactly what he said. The Edge 540. It's a 1100 millimeter EPP foam. The version we sell has the airplane, the motor, the ESC, servos. You add battery and you add receiver and you're off and flying. This is a great 3D trainer. In this video, we're going to go over it from tip to tip, head, head to tail, nose to front. What is that? Tail? Nose to tail. Wing tip to wing tip. And then we're going to unbox it and show you everything that's inside. Go over the specs, the motors, the ESCs, the servos, tell you what they are. And then we're going to go fly. All right, guys. So Dancing Wing has re released a Edge 540. This is a 43.3 inch uh, or 1100 millimeter wingspan. So it's slightly bigger than the Shining um, and the Yak series that you've seen us review before. Um, Carrie, this one features four Metal Gear 9 gram size servos. They have the uh, carbon little uh, carbon extensions for extra throw. Move your fingers. Oh, okay. sorry. Okay. So you got that, you got on the wing. A lot of sparring. The fuselage is actually split in two and then uh, sparred up to make it two pieces so they can ship it in a smaller box to keep the cost down. This plane like that color. with Metal Gear servos, 30 amp speed control, and a 2216 950 kV motor with a bolt-on prop adapter. That's new. Um, so replacing collets will be a lot easier than bending shafts and all that. This sucker right here fills that gap for 3D planes. They can fly on, everybody starts out with these ready to flies that come with like 2200 three cells. If it's a lightweight 2200 three cell, it'll fit perfectly. Otherwise, uh, 1100 to the 13, even 1500 three cell, three cell yeah. whatever fits in here. But guys, the three cell battery anywhere, I'm gonna say from 1100 to 2000, depending on your flying style. If you're trying to do 3D, keep it closer to 1300. If you just want general flyer, you can get away with the 2200 as long as it's not like some crazy 90,000 C <laughs> battery. Um, Talk about the C rating. So you could use C a high rating is generally bull crap, but it's a good baseline. If you're looking at one brand of battery, like China Hobby Line, if they got a 30C and a 120C, chances are the 120C is going to be a better grade of battery, just a better quality cell. Um, typically, you, you for could planes, use that. you can yeah, use that. For a plane, 3040C on a quality name brand battery is going to be good. If you're buying some ABC something from eBay or Amazon, it's a crapshoot. Right. So the last time we've got questions is which C rating, any C rating basically, but the voltage you have to be careful. 11.1 volt. 11.1 volt, I would say a 30 to 40C battery. If it's a Gen Zays, 25C. But you can go higher. You can go higher. It yeah. C it, rating I, higher it, than 30C doesn't really matter as much. Right. If you're one extreme performance, higher C, but at the end of the day, this thing's only going to pull about 25 amps. Right, but, but a higher C won't break the motor. Correct. All right. All so, right. guys, let's show you what's in the box, roughly. Okay, so the plane itself, you're going to open it up, and Ooh. you'll see the fuselage. First of all, small box, easy to ship, easy to hide from the spouse, etc. What are you talking about? <laughs> Don't have that problem. What? Um, okay. Hide that. <laughs> But uh, basically, you have your airframe here, separate it. You got the control surfaces. Now, the, it's EPP foam. Should it is EPP. Yeah. So this stuff is super durable. Oh, yeah, there you go. Okay. So it will take, uh, they use a lot of carbon reinforcements. We'll show you that. And real quick, the, all this colors is silk screen on here. Yeah, That's so, how it comes. Yeah. No stickers. It's silk actually on the foam. Yeah, it's a paint. Yeah. So. Okay. You'll see this thing comes with a ton of carbon sparring. It's flat carbon, so when it's put in uh, vertically, it's very strong. Uh, help keep this thing supported and very, very durable. Like a beam. You got your wheels, got landing gear, got quick links, motor mount, control horns, control arms. Uh, ooh, Y harness. That's a good one. So now you can use a four channel receiver without having to buy a Y harness. Nice. Ooh, a propeller. A propeller, which is what are they running? Eleven seven propeller. Um, I would personally still go with the slow flyer style prop. That's just me it though. Looks like a ruler. <laughs> that is your plywood battery plates and landing gear mount. And then... Like like that right there. We got the wing, which has an airfoil. I don't know if you can see... Oh, there you go. There's a good side cut. You can actually see this EPP has an airfoil, unlike yeah, a lot of the super nice. cheap EPPs out there. And a manual. And it has pictures. It has words. It does things. You read it. You build it. You fly it. What uh, Dancing Wing has done on the control surfaces is live foam hinges. So they've actually laser cut the sur or hot wire cut the, s the surfaces so now it can fold and if you look at the elevator this might be a little easier to show you guys you quit moving it go so <laughs> the whole surface there and you'll notice these cuts in here if you see it closely yeah, yeah. that is for the carbon sparring so you're going to have sparring across diagonally straight across can we see it in here 
yeah. Oh yeah, I guess I could show you the, the you know, the built one. You'll see the carbon there and it stiffens it up. So I see this one has uh, one, two, three screws. Is that because we just built so it? So you have a corner? screw to hold the servo horn in, yeah. two screws for the extension horn to bolt to the original control horn. Okay. Moving down to the quick link, you have the screw to lock here. The nut on the back, guys, always remember, turn it till it stops, back it out a little bit so it yeah. easily pivots and put a drop of super glue on the back of the threads to keep it secure. Okay. And then one last thing. You didn't want to oh, yeah. that entirely. That's the most important part. Now we're going over the whole thing. Yeah. So now we have one, two, three, four Metal Gear servos. We have the 2216 950 motor with a bolt on prop adapter. If I can show, I'm trying to show it and it's kind of hard to see in there. But we got it. Okay. And then a 30 amp speed control. And all the bullet connectors and then. Free solder bullet connectors, XC60, yes. 60 all ready to go. And also keep in mind, guys, when you look at your servos, when you put them together, you have two short and two long wires. So the longer Ooh. wires are going to go to the tail. The shorter wires are going to go to the wing. Good tip, good tip. Okay. So double check them before you glue them. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. And guys, that's everything in the box. This is a pretty quick build. If you have regular CA uh, glue, um, foam tack, and uh, I would say CA kicker. So medium CA, kicker, and foam tack is the three things I would say gluing wise that you need. Other than that, um, X-Acto blade, maybe a ruler to measure or some string to make sure you square everything up. And other than that, it's a pretty straightforward build, super quick. You could get these done in a couple hours and go out flying. So I know this question is going to come up. It's a very simple question, but any receiver walk in there? Any receiver that's a four channel or greater with regular servo plugs. So whether it be Spectrum, Free Sky, Fly Sky, Fataba, Radio JR, Master. Radio Master, Jumper, uh, High Tech, Airtronics. <laughs> um, All right. ABC Hobby, no. Um, anything that's a four channel PWM receiver will work in this guy. All right. All right, what do you think, Will? I think the overall shape of this plane is a great size. It's a larger plane, so it's gonna fly in a little bit more of a breeze, stuff like that. Yeah. It's got a little higher wing loading because of its size and all that, so I think it's a good idea. Um, I love the bolt-on prop adapter. Anybody that's flown a DW Hobby before, the three millimeter shafts with the, the heavy duty props, you nose them on the concrete and all that, you end up bending a shaft or breaking a shaft. Kind of a pain in the butt to replace the shaft. It's doable. This one being a bolt-on collet will be, uh, or prop adapter will be easy to replace in the event you do bend it or damage it. But it will also be stronger at the same time. Yeah. Um, the one thing, like every DW, I don't care for the regular style props. I like the slow flyer props on these kind of planes versus the regular APC clones. Um, so that's one thing I would personally still change if I was buying it. I would click the little add to cart on a different prop. Um, but other than that, um, add a four channel receiver, add a battery and go flying. Yeah. This is actually one of my favorite sizes that I love the color scheme. The 20, um, just, yeah, I'm just going to keep blocking them there. The 2200 is one of my favorite size airplanes or the uh, 2200 battery size. Um, it's heavy enough to fly in with a little wind. And basically if you're still training, if you're still learning, but you want to get that plane that you do want to fly a little more and be confident with. Uh, this is a great plane because the EPP is durable, but you turn down the rates and everything, this thing was still pretty much like a trainer. Yeah. Um, they fly very easy. They're a lot more forgiving than some of the other airframes out there. And if you do nose it in, if you do smack it in, stall it, whatever, generally it's a matter of picking it back up and going again. And even more spoiled, <laughs> because we have a great, great customer, Ken Bug, um, built this one, right? Yes, Ken did build this one for us because we have been pretty busy. Yeah, so, so thanks, Ken.